have two components within the supercar that can log data within the car itself, the chassis, the engine, etc. The first one is the ECU. I tend to not deal with this one, that's more of a supercar or a KRE global engine supplier one. The second one is the dash, that's got its own separate logging system. They're both connected via CAN bus, one's got one different output and different inputs. Our telemetry is run on a 4G system, so it's literally using the Telstra and Vodafone and Optus networks depending on where we go and what tracks and what cellular towers are around. We've got a certain bandwidth that we can only send data across for telemetry. We, if we use too much of that, then it gets slow, it, um, we lose parts. So for telemetry wise, we send roughly about 71 sensors across. They range at different speeds. Um, bandwidth wise, we're looking around 70% of the total bandwidth. Any higher than that, we do start to notice a drop in, in speed. On the other hand, we do download the data after every session. Now that comes directly from the car, from the data logger which has ECU data sensors within it because they're connected. That's more around the 300 mark and you can get log files up to half a, half a gig plus Bathurst. We um, input a lower logging file into the car and that gives us so we can do the whole whole race without losing any data. Obviously then we have to select what sensors we want and what channels we need to uh, the logging rate. Telemetry is really easy. There's two parts to it. You got your go fast bits, which is what Wes looks at, and you've got your vitals, which is what I look at. So your engine stuff, making sure that the car's not just gonna combustibly explode out the track is my job. Wes is looking at your basics, your throttle, your brake, your engine speed, your, and your ground speed. With those things, see what Todd's doing inside the car to then adjust the car before he comes in to the pit lane and then we're on top of it, ready to go. I'm just monitoring channels, making sure the engines and temps are good, pressures, etc. So the data dump generally has a lot higher logging rates than the telemetry and it comes with diagnostic channels. At the end of the day, the data log is just a computer. It's no different to getting your laptop, opening 50 programs up and expecting it, it's all gonna work. You go and load a CAD file and all the other bits and pieces, it's gonna crash. Same with the, with the data logger. If I'm trying to make it generate a thousand user channels and a thousand maths channels and making it work hard, I'm gonna crash it. I'm gonna have a failure in some way. I'll get a, a short across a line or I'll get something where it gets hot and then, and then fail from there. So within the ECU channels, there is things like CPU usage and download speeds and all those little bits and how much bandwidth I'm taking up of the, the current part of the, the data logger. So the, the MoTeC has this screen that we can see, the driver can see. Now, only the driver is gonna be the one that's looking at it because that's when the car is on track. We've set up as a team, set up pages within when the mechanics are doing run up, they can see the temperatures, pressures, battery voltages, all the vitals that they need to be able to make sure the car's going smoothly for that run up, getting the engine hot, getting the trans hot, and making sure that they're not gonna have a failure on their part. When Todd's out on track, he has different modes within the track settings. He's got a pit lane mode, he's got a start mode. The screen changes depending on those modes. Modes. Pit mode is as simple as it comes on when the pit switch is on. It comes up with a line locker, so new rule for us is the line locker has to be on when the car's up in the air. From that, it gives Todd a warning. If it sees that he hasn't turned his line locker on, it will tell him, mate, you haven't turned your line locker on, click it. So then there's little things like that. Another one that I've put in is the stop time. So during a Bathurst uh, long endurance stop, he can see how roughly long he's got left to the end of the stop and adjust his you know, position, seat belts, driver air, helmet, radio, all those little things that makes him comfortable. He can start to actually pick it out because out on track he's got no time for that. So the start line's pretty simple. It basically just throws, shows a throttle and a brake percentage. Um, and that's just so he can get his, again, the line locker engaged on the right brake percentage and then bring the throttle up on that. Um, our line lockers are all hand based so he can get, take his foot off the brake and then onto the throttle. So the warning lights within this need to be simple. Drivers have a thousand other things going on in their mind and they don't need to be getting lights here, lights there, different coloured lights, shift lights, all the rest of them. They just got to be simple. So we use an effective method, two red lights on the outside, that's just a simple warning. You've over revved, high temperatures, etc. 
if it then exceeds that and it's, mate, you need to do something about it, it'll go all the red across the screen.